with the people who were being poisoned sided with the company. They sided with Monsanto. It was outrageous, absolutely unforgivable. <laughs> oh, Jesus, all you men? Yeah. It, well, no, they ain't all of them. I, I got know. some more here. <laughs> How much you have in you? 63.8 in the blood. In the blood. If they took a fatty biopsy of him now, he probably would top the scales of about three or four thousand parts per billion or more. And which is a level acceptable? I mean, acceptable is two point part, uh, two parts per billion. That's the standard all around the world. But these people, we have more in our bloods and in our body than actually anywhere else in the world. Uh -huh. It's usual here to speak about his PCB point. level. We all talks about it because it became a household word now. Kids used to run up to me, Mr. Baker, I, I got tested. I had three point part per billion in my blood. Uh, how, how long do you think I got? But that's a horrible story. But what do scientists think about it? On the web, you can find numerous articles concerning the effects of PCBs on human health. David Carpenter is one of the most qualified specialists in the field. He carried out the testing for the Aniston residents. We all have PCBs in our bodies. The polar bears and the penguins have PCBs. And what has happened is in the past, there were a few sites where PCBs were released. But over time, they've gone into the air, they've gone into the water, they've transported, so the whole world is now contaminated with PCBs. The issue is that many diseases are caused by PCB exposure. The one everyone knows about is cancer. My test results stated that I had 202, 202 parts per billion in my system. Women that get pregnant and have PCBs in their body will have a child with a reduced IQ. 29.6. PCBs cause reduced thyroid function. Oh, 1,800. PCBs interfere with sex hormones. I swear, I just let me pass away. Pass away in peace. He's going to pay, I said then. He's going to pay for the way that he has done to us. In 2001, 20,000 Aniston residents filed two lawsuits against Monsanto. Monsanto and its subsidiary, Solucia, settled by paying $700 million to compensate the victims, to clean up the site, and to build a specialized hospital. But no Monsanto executive was ever sued. To do justice. Under American law, in most instances, it's very rare for executives or uh, officials in these companies to be held criminally responsible. So we have the civil system, the civil courts. We make them pay. And the truth of the matter is, in most instances, uh, the price these companies pay decades later is a fraction of their profits. And this is why it pays to keep these problems secret. And it makes you wonder what they might be keeping secret now. Uh, I have to say, we would never trust a company like Monsanto to tell the truth about a pollution problem or about a product. We would never trust them. Ken Cook says we would never trust a company like Monsanto. So what about Roundup, the world's favorite herbicide used by gardeners and farmers alike? What is it exactly? It's the brand name Monsanto gave to glyphosat, a so-called non-selective or total herbicide because it destroys all plants. First sold in 1974, it owes its great success to Monsanto's unwavering claims that it is biodegradable and good for the environment. Voici Roundup, le premier désherbant biodégradable. Il détruit les mauvaises herbes de l'intérieur jusqu'aux racines et ne pollue ni la terre ni l'os de Rex. Roundup, le désherbant qui donne envie de désherber. Roundup biodegradable. Ken Cook was right. The company was found guilty of false advertising. Twice. The first time was in New York in 1996. 
And the second was in France just last year. The judges found that the wording biodegradable leaves the soil clean and respects the environment for false advertising. Especially since, according to tests performed by Monsanto itself, only 2% of the product had broken down after 28 days. That's why Monsanto recently removed the word biodegradable from its containers. But that's not all. Many scientific studies have shown that Roundup is highly toxic. For example, Roundup provokes cell division dysfunction, a study by Professor Robert Bellet. Professor Bellet works for the National Center for Scientific Research and the Pierre and Marie Curie Institute in France. He has studied the effects of Roundup on fertilized sea urchin eggs. The big surprise was that Roundup has an effect on cell division. We saw very quickly that Roundup affected a key process in cell division. Not the cell division mechanisms themselves, but those which control cell division. You have to understand how cells become cancerous. In the beginning, all cells are benign, and then at a certain point, modifications take place in the cells that make them unstable from a genetic point of view. This is the first malfunction that we observed with Roundup. It is for that reason that we consider that Roundup provokes the first stages that lead to cancer. We're careful not to say it provokes cancer, because we won't see the cancers develop for 30 or 40 years. It was immediately clear how important these findings were for product users, especially since the tested doses were well below those which people normally use, and we said to ourselves, gosh, we really have to let the public know about the dangers as quickly as we can. And I thought the best way to do that was to talk to my administration. But there, I was shocked, and very, very shocked, because I was told, ordered, rather, not to communicate our findings due to the GMO question lurking in the background. What an incredible account. Roundup's toxicity was hidden to protect the development of GMOs. So let's go back to the creation of GMOs. According to Monsanto's site, Roundup Ready soybeans introduced in 1996 were the first bioengineered crop to be approved in the United States. Farmers using these seeds belong to the American Soybean Association, whose address is on Monsanto's site. John Hoffman is its vice president and an ardent biotechnology advocate. In the spring, I will go out and, and spray one pass of Roundup to burn down the weeds that are growing in the early spring. And about uh, six or seven weeks later, I'll spray a second pass of Roundup. And that controls the weeds for the year. Before we had Roundup technology, this field would have had weeds. We would have had to walk through and pull the excess weeds by hand. It was labor intensive. So the Roundup Ready system ta saves me time and it saves me money. It seems Monsanto's new wonder has what it takes to entice farmers. But how does it work? How can the soybean plants survive being sprayed with Roundup? This is a soybean cell. The core of this cell contains its DNA in which the bean's genetic structure is encoded. In order to create its GMOs, Monsanto breaks the species barrier using a Roundup-resistant gene harvested from a bacterium. This gene is placed on microscopic particles of gold, which are fired into the soybean cells with a gene gun. The gene penetrates the DNA and creates a protein, making the plant resistant to Roundup. When the herbicide is sprayed on the crop, it kills all the weeds, leaving the soybean plants intact. One must admit that the problem